Welcome to the glorious HRD Industries. <laughs> About a year ago, I made a video regarding a tent spike and essentially what you could do with a tent spike and a trucker mount, put it in the ground, have yourself a multi-band vertical quarter wave antenna using a telescoping antenna like this. Ooh. I recently received a question though that, hey, when I go do parks on the air at certain parks, I'm not allowed to dig into the ground. I'm not allowed to disturb the earth, tie a rope around a tree. So what can I do? And I have a solution for you today that I think will be simple and pretty cost effective. Let's go ahead and talk about it. We're gonna try to build it. And if it doesn't work, we're gonna make it work. The first thing that we're gonna wanna do is we're gonna wanna go our happy asses over to Goodwill. If you're not familiar here in the United States, Goodwill is a thrift store or a secondhand store where people donate stuff for free and then the store resells it for a huge profit. Recently, I made a video about Goodwill and all the cool stuff I find there, particularly the fact that I kind of have an obsession with collecting bags. Oh, also, I have an obsession with collecting tripods, too. And that's what you're going to go look for at Goodwill. You want to find yourself a tripod. Today, I think I found the ultimate one that I'm looking for. It's going to be this one right here. It's a Sears tripod, and it's got to be from like 1940. But the cool thing about it is it does have this cool latching system that's flat on the top and the screw that was supposed to be in there didn't come with this device. So this is a Sears model 8465 and really it's a bit heavy, but it does compact down to about this length. Once you find yourself a tripod and, and realistically, when you see what's going on here, you realize you're probably gonna be able to use any tripod that you find there as long as it's durable enough. I like that this is heavy because you're gonna see what's going on here. Let's go ahead and set this to the side for a minute next to my HRD Industries executive chair slash six meter antenna. The next thing you're gonna need is you're gonna need this cool trucker mount. You can find these typically at Hamfest for just about 10 bucks. And I have an elbow connector in mind, meaning it's like a 90 degree connector where the SO239 attaches, but you might find one, hmm, if it's at this house, HRD, glorious HRD Industries, you might not find it. You might have your trucker mount with one of these straight throughs, and it really it's fine. You're gonna see. Once you get this trucker mount, here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna take apart the trucker mount, okay? And what I like to do is I like to get one of these ring connectors. I like to attach a small, short piece of wire to it and then use a power pole connector. A cheap knockoff power pole connector typically works the best. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna place that ring connector through so it's only touching the outer portion of the, uh, basically of the connector, which will be our outer shield or our radio wire spot. And then I'm gonna take that and I'm gonna place it through our trucker mount. I know what you're thinking. Yep, right here we have a, we'll call it an insulator or a little piece of plastic ring. And I'm gonna pop that in there, basically separating the antenna from the rest of the device. And you'll see why I put it up here in just a minute. That may or may not apply to you, but then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take that coupler, it's a 3 8 inch coupler, and I'm gonna screw it on. Now you're gonna notice that I have an extension piece on here, and this is just the converter from 3 8 to, I think it's 10 millimeters for my cheap Chinese antennas. There we go, right? Not anything special. And so here's what we're gonna do next. Let me just bring you down to my level. I'm sure in all of the glorious HRD industries, we are gonna be able to find some kind of lock washer. I just couldn't right now. So I'm gonna take this tripod and you could see that okay, I think. I got this long bolt. And I think what's most important about this long bolt is A, it fits through here, but rest on the top portion of the L bracket or the trucker mount. Okay, and then we want it to fit through the actual camera mount itself. I couldn't get it to fit, so I drilled a small hole through the middle, and now I could fit this right through here, and I am coming up with this thought concept in my head, <laughs> but that's probably for another time. Anyway, now that I know that this bolt is gonna fit, I'm gonna go ahead and tighten down the clamps that hold the L bracket, the bolt onto the L bracket rather. And tight is always good enough, right? Can't wait for the comments to say how many things that I lose credibility in my life for. You lose credibility for being an angry old crab. 
you lose credibility for those glasses. Ah, good enough for government work. Now that we have it somewhat tight, we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna take that bolt with the trucker mount and we're gonna put it through the actual camera spot that you may have had a drill. And this is typically where I would use like a lock washer or something and then I would go ahead and screw on my nut, but I don't have a lock washer so this is gonna suffice right now. I need a different wrench. And glorious HRD industry. <laughs> Oh yeah, I mean, in my mind, I see it now. I'm gonna get for another episode, and I kind of already mentioned this, but I'm gonna get another L bracket, trucker mount, and I'm gonna put it, we'll figure it out, but it, we're gonna do that at some point in life. Now, we're in a good spot for me to talk about how cool is that, right? But also, why did I put the insulator on the top as opposed to toward the bottom? and we should probably check continuity as well. However, my goal to put the insulator on the top was, if I put it on the bottom, then the whole antenna would become the whole antenna. The L bracket would be touching this metal, which would be going through this tripod, which is all metal, which is all metal. And basically, this would all become part of the antenna, and I didn't like that, so I put the insulator on the top, making sure that the actual antenna portion shouldn't be touching this L bracket internally, and therefore there should be no continuity. Let's check that real quick. This is a Kawitz multimeter. No, they didn't send it to me. It's the model HT118A. I purchased it on my own free will, and it actually works okay for what I use it for. All right, just to make sure here, we have continuity between the prongs, and the first thing I wanna check is to make sure we have continuity in the antenna. Yep, good to go. We don't have continuity on the outer shield and the antenna. That's good. Again, check the prongs. And we should be good at that point. Next thing you'll real I'm gonna check is, I wanna check to make sure that I have continuity between the radio wire power pole adapter I made and the outer shield, you know. Uh, here we are out in the front lawn of HRD, glorious HRD Industries. And I wanted to show you here, I got the tripod on, I got an antenna on, and I got the little spot for my radio wires, which if you haven't seen other episodes, this is how I'm doing my radio wires now. I have one, two, three, four, five groups of radio wires. Uh, three of them have five sets of radio wires at 10 feet each, and two of them have two sets at probably 10 feet each as well. Okay, and then all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna plug it into here, and since they're knockoff power pull adapters, <laughs> kind of hard at this angle difficult at this angle there we go but since they're knockoff kind of power pull adapters they'll separate easy in case anybody runs through glorious hrd industries we don't want them to get hurt and now that i have those on i'm going to go ahead and spread out my radio wires but one of the other things i kind of wanted to make a note of we have a 17 foot telescoping antenna on here that's not fully extended at the moment if for whatever reason this base started to get loose which it kind of looks like it might be already it's not clicked in but I can do one of two things I can get some sandbags and I can place them on each of these sections that hold the tripod to the main base of the tripod or I could just extend the tripod out which will give it a wider base and more stability uh, at least I think would be the case and so we're going to see how that will work now um, I'm going to get these wires spread out and I'm going to check my standing wave ratio on some bands and all that jazz we'll be right back while you're waiting for me now's a good time to maybe uh, comment like and subscribe my antenna is crooked toward me a little bit, so I'm just going to take the adjustment for the camera. There we go, and I'm going to lock it down. Let me show you what I'm talking about. And of course, while I'm showing you this, it's important to also kind of point out that your tripod might not be exactly the same, but I do find these tripods at Goodwill all the time, literally all the time. See, these old cameras have this cool handle, and you could loosen it, and then you could adjust the antenna or the, what would be the camera on here looks pretty good to me and at this point it's a little bit thing but we do have a little bit of wind today and it's not blowing around or bending over so i think it's okay again okay, sandbags if you need well before we test it out though hydrate yeah standing wave ratio looks good and that's important so what's more important is the impedance value looks good and the x value is close to zero which there might be a little bit of interaction with the house around here and stuff like that too but you know things are well 
And I think that this system, although heavier than the tent spike solution, is a solution for people who want to adhere to the park rules and regulations, whether it's a state park or a national park, and don't want to penetrate the earth if they're not supposed to be penetrating the earth. Uh, being respectful of what has been presented to us as far as the rules go and pertaining to being kind to our environment because we don't want to set a, you know, a forest on fire up in Canada or something like that, right? Because of our own stupidity. And yep, you might not like that take, but it's the truth. And with that said, thanks for checking out the channel. I hope you enjoyed this. I hope it gave you a few ideas on what you might be able to do if you can't mount anything to the ground when you're out and about doing parks on the air or you're at a national park or maybe even within your HOA, there's some kind of rules and regulations. What I will tell you is uh, this solution works for me. You might need to tweak it a little bit depending on what tripod you have. But again, it's just kind of thinking outside the box and you could find very, very light, maybe even carbon fiber tripods. So think about that as well in the future. Hydrate. And subscribe.